So you've learned all about covalent bonding, you've learned how to draw Lewis structures, and now you are ready for Vesper. And Vesper is the theory that is used to represent three-dimensional molecular shapes using electron pair repulsion. So what exactly does Vesper stand for, and why do we call it Vesper and not Vesper? Well, I can't answer the second one, it's just always been called Vesper, but I can't answer that first one. Vesper stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, in every molecule, and this only applies to covalent compounds, covalent compounds only. You do not use Vesper theory on ionic compounds. You use lattice structure on ionic compounds. And so what this means is when you have a molecule, you have all these valent shells. You know when you were drawing the Lewis structures, you were really only concerned with those outer energy level electrons. Well, you have also learned that likes repel. And those electron pairs, those outer energy level electron pairs, they're going to repel each other in such a way that it gives the molecule its shape. So I'm going to go through each of the different types of Vesper shapes using something called a charge cloud. So the first thing is that if you have only two atoms bonded to each other, that shape, it has to be linear because there is no other way that two atoms, let's say hydrogen chloride. So you have a hydrogen atom and you have a chlorine atom. The only way that these two guys can bond together is linearly. They are not going to make any other shape because there isn't any other shape that they can make. All the other molecules, they can have different shapes based on something called the number of charge clouds around the central atom. And I'll explain what a charge cloud is in just a second. Actually, how about right now? Uh, sorry, I don't know what's coming next on my own notes. Charge clouds include any bond that's coming off of an atom and any lone pairs that are coming off of an atom. And I'm about to give you so many examples of this, you're going to want to pull your hair out. So don't worry if you don't understand what I'm talking about now. I promise that you will whenever I'm done. What if you have something with two charge clouds? Well, what I have here is a picture of carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is double bonded to two oxygens and then those two oxygens have a couple of lone pairs coming off of them. But we are focused on the central atom, which in this case is the carbon. Well, how many charge clouds does carbon have coming off of it? Well, he has a double bond right here, and he has a double bond right here. And you might go, oh, okay, two double bonds, that's four charge clouds. But if you remember, a double bond counts as one charge cloud. And so carbon actually has two charge clouds coming off of it. And two charge clouds will almost always, no it will always be linear. So if you have a diatomic molecule or you have a molecule where the central atom has two charge clouds, then it's going to be linear. So what if you have three charge clouds? Well, this first instance I have here, this is formaldehyde, CH2O, and the carbon is double bonded to the oxygen and then single bonded to each of the hydrogens. And you can see here that you don't have any lone pairs. We're just talking about the central atom, remember. There are no lone pairs, but you have one, two, three charge clouds. And in order for these three clouds to be as far away as they can be, they're going to be what's called trigonal planar. They're going to form this flat triangle shape. And so this whole shape will be in the same plane. Well, what if you have something like this? Again, I don't, I don't like this drawing at all because it looks like sulfur's got 10 pairs of electrons going on, and we know it doesn't. Um, sulfur dioxide, if you remember your resonance, is one of those things that has resonance. And so this is the sulfur, these are the oxygens, and the sulfur has one charge cloud right here 
and it has another charge cloud right here. And then sulfur also has a lone pair hanging out right here. So this is a third charge cloud. And so it still does that kind of trigonal planar shape. It's just that you can't really see this one. And so what you end up having is what just looks like a bent molecule. And that's what they very creatively named it was bent. Well, moving on up to four charged clouds, we have methane here, CH4. And now we need to start representing things in three dimensions. And this first one for CH4, oh, I guess we're going to do, hang on. This first one for CH4 is going to have what's called a tetrahedral shape. This is a shape that you need to know because four charge clouds, very important. And this shape, what it looks like, and imagine that this is 3D, it kind of like this goes back into the paper, this goes back into the paper, this first one comes out at you. <coughs> And then this kind of forms, I'm going to draw this like dotted line, like a triangular base to a pyramid. And so you get this kind of pyramid shape where the center of the pyramid is your central atom. You can see that a little bit better here. This time instead of a triangular flat shape, it's kind of kicked up. And so this kind of forms like this right here. And then again, this you know, forms the base of the pyramid back here, and then this forms the front of the pyramid. So you end up with this kind of trigonal pyramid shape, or trigonal pyramidal. And that's when you have three bonded pairs and one lone pair. Tetrahedral is if you have nothing but bonded pairs. And then there's actually one more shape that goes with four charge clouds, and that is, and this is water, hopefully you recognize that, that's if you have two bonded pairs here and here and then two lone pairs here and here and that makes again the bent shape which hopefully you can recognize now for time purposes I actually am going to fast forward to the lovely summary table I love this table because it puts everything in a nice, neat picture and it shows the relationships of the charged clouds to the different shapes with their lone pairs. So this one, instead of using the term charged cloud, they use the term steric number, but that's the same thing. This means charged cloud. And you can see here that with two charge clouds, you're going to be linear. With three charge clouds, you get the trigonal planar or bent if you have a lone pair. Um, and then here's the four charge cloud shapes again. And if you're looking at this going, uh, what the heck does that mean? Well, this open triangle like this means that it's coming out of the page at you. And these horizontal lines like this, that means it's going back into the page. And then if it has a straight line, that means that it's in the plane of the paper that you're drawing on. So I would suggest that you know for sure these six shapes. And you don't have to memorize the exact bond angles, but you do need to know kind of roughly what the bond angles are. Now with these guys, you really only need to be able to recognize them if they were given to you. So like you should be able to look at this and go, okay, this has one, two, three, four, five charge clouds, and then you should be able to come to this table and pick out the shape. These guys you should be able to figure out without the table. These two rows, you will usually get to have some kind of a table to figure out their shape. 